Helen Fisher, if you're ready, Helen. Welcome. And uh, Helen, is, uh, it, it's very, very special for me to have you here because, welcome Helen, because um, Helen actually gave us the idea of the theme of love uh, by when I listened to, uh, to, to Helen in, in uh, TED a few years ago and in Davos. And I was thrilled and I could not believe that Helen would actually, you know, make it here. So I'm so happy you joined us. So Helen is a biological anthropologist. She's a research professor. And uh, um, Helen uh, is seen as, you know, the expert in uh, not only the US, but uh, around the world about how people fall in love. And her books, I just give you the titles, Why We Love, The First Sex, Anatomy of Love and a Sex Contract. And I've read a few of them and I really advise you to, uh, to read them. It's uh, very, very scientific as you will see and I should just you know, escape now and give you the stage. But uh, I think it's, uh, it's really uh, very, very uh, lucky to have you here. So Helen, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Please help me welcome Helen. Good morning, good afternoon. Thank you very much for having me, Louis and Geraldine. And thank you for coming, and I am delighted to be here. I and my colleagues have put uh, 37 people who are madly in love into a functional MRI brain scanner. Uh, 15 of them uh, were happily in love. They had just fallen in love within the last seven months. Uh, 15 of them had just been rejected in love. And uh, the last uh, 17 had been um, reported that they were still in love after uh, an average of 21 years of marriage. We just actually uh, announced that study at the Society for Neuroscience uh, in um, Washington, D.C. Uh, the world thinks that you cannot remain in love long term, and uh, we've proven that that's um, that's not true. You can fall in love longer if you pick the right person. And uh, so what I'm going to talk about is what happens in the brain when you fall in love, uh, the evolution of love, and why you fall in love with one person rather than another. That's my most recent research. Um, uh, Match.com, the internet dating site, came to me um, four years ago and asked me, why do you fall in love with one person rather than another? And I said, I don't know. Uh, nobody knows. Uh, um, and uh, they said, well, would you like to start a new dating site for us? And I said, I don't know if you've got the right person. Um, I'm an anthropologist. I study why we're all alike. And uh, you're asking me why we are all different. So anyway, I said, uh, do you think you've got the right person? And they said they thought they did. And so I uh, have embarked on my newest research, which is why you fall in love with one person rather than another. So this is the story, the short story of love. <laughs> in the jungles of Guatemala, there stands a temple. It is built by the grandest sun king of the grandest city-state, Tikal, of the grandest civilization of the Americas, the Maya. It was built by a man called Casa Canchawa. He stood over six feet tall, he lived into his 80s, and he was buried beneath this temple in around the year 720 AD. And Mayan inscriptions say that he was madly in love with his wife. She was a woman who died young, and so he built the temple in her honor. And every spring and every autumn, exactly at the equinox, the sun rises behind his temple and perfectly casts his shadow over her temple. And as the sun sets behind her temple in the afternoon, it perfectly bathes his temple in her shadow. And today, some 1,300 years later, these two lovers still touch. Around the world, people love. They sing for love, they dance for love, they compose poems and stories and novels about love. They retell myths and legends about love. They have love charms, love magic, love potions. They pine for love. They live for love. They kill for love. And they die for love. 
In fact, anthropologists have found evidence of romantic love in every single society that they've looked for it, in 170 societies in all. And in fact, um, I did one study, um, a questionnaire study of 800 uh, Americans and Japanese to see uh, whether they were expressed the same degree of love they do. Uh, men express just as much love as women do. In fact, men fall in love faster than women do because they're so visually oriented. Um, uh, men are much more likely to kill themselves when a relationship is over uh, than women are. Women are more hard-headed in terms of love, not much, uh, but somewhat more hard-headed than, than men are. And um, the information about love goes back for, I don't know, uh, the oldest love poem comes from 4,000 years ago uh, in um, ancient Sumeria. So around the world, people love. Shakespeare once said, what is to love? I think that mankind has been wondering this since our ancestors sat around their campfires or lay and watched the stars over a million years ago. I think that we evolved actually because love means so many different things to so many different people, I have come to believe that we've evolved three distinctly different brain systems for loving. One is lust, uh, the craving for sexual gratification associated with testosterone in both men and women. Uh, Pablo Neruda called it an eternal thirst or an infinite ache. Uh, W.H. Jordan called it an intolerable neural itch. That's what happens, you suddenly feel this craving for sexual gratification. It uh, can often have no object, you, uh, you can feel it for a range of people. The second brain system is romantic love, the one I'm going to talk more about. It's passionate love, obsessive love, being in love, infatuation. I think it's all the same thing. Associated with different brain chemicals, I've been maintained it's associated with dopamine and norepinephrine. I think these are the, also the same brain chemicals that uh, most of you are uh, feeling when you are being entrepreneurs and uh, being driven to the desk in the middle of the night, obsessed with your work, as the week said. Um, and the third brain system is attachment, that sense of calm and security that you can feel for a long-term partner. Um, I think that these three brain systems evolve for different reasons. I think the sex drive evolved to get you out there looking for a whole range of partners. I think romantic love evolved to enable you to focus your mating energy on just one person at a time. And I think that attachment, the third brain chemical, evolved so that you can tolerate this human being um, at least long enough uh, to raise your babies as a team. And of the three, um, these, these three brain systems uh, interact with each other. For example, when you fall madly in love with somebody, uh, elevated activity of dopamine in the brain drives up testosterone in the brain, and suddenly a person who three weeks ago, they were just a, another person at the gym, uh, another person in your social circle or at work, suddenly every single thing about them becomes sexually attractive. And the reason is because as you fall deeply in love with somebody, it's driving up dopamine in the brain, and dopamine uh, triggers the testosterone system. They've got a positive correlation between these two brain systems, and suddenly they become very sexually attractive to you, which of course is the point of romantic love uh, to start the whole mating process.